Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a human descended from ape. I'm also a huge history nerd. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, and anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share some of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's dig in to today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today, in 1859, Charles Darwin published On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. The central thesis of the book probably sounds familiar. Organisms evolve through the process of natural selection. Natural selection basically means that species get better at surviving through breeding based on the characteristics that help them survive in a given environment. This means that organisms that have beneficial characteristics to their environment are more likely to survive and thus carry on their genes through future generations. He poised that all living creatures descended from a common ancestor, though Darwin didn't specifically use the word evolution. That's the theory that the book represented and carried forward into history. This was incredibly groundbreaking. Common knowledge at the time stated that humans were completely separate from animals and plants with no common cell makeup. Darwin's theories shook the world, but ultimately laid the groundwork for the entire field of evolutionary biology today. While working on the book, Darwin was influenced by early scholars Thomas Malthus and Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck. Lamarck had drawn the first evolutionary diagram, which looked like a ladder going from individual cells to the modern man. Darwin worked on the theory that he eventually published in On the Origin of Species while on a five-year boating expedition on the HMS Beagle in the 1830s. This trip took Darwin to the Galapagos Islands, the coast of South America and New Zealand, where he carefully studied animals, plants, and geology of the regions he surveyed. On this journey, Darwin was most fascinated by finches and their varying beak sizes, as well as the tortoises of the Galapagos Islands. When Darwin got back to England, he studied different species breeding and combined that with his fieldwork to create his theory of evolution. Studying evolution ran in Darwin's family. His grandfather, Erasmus Darwin was a well-regarded scientist. Darwin furthered his grandfather's thinking, and that of his influence, Lamarck, by providing the scientific explanation behind the idea of evolution. Darwin had already figured out his thesis in 1844, but he took many years to publish it because he was afraid of the reaction from the Catholic public who voraciously believed in the creationism of the Bible. Darwin eventually became pushed to publication because of another man— Alfred Russell Wallace independently published a paper in 1958 that essentially summarized Darwin's argument. Wallace's research had been completed in the Malay archipelago. Darwin and Wallace ended up collaborating to give a lecture on the theory of evolution to the Linnean Society of London in July. Afterwards, Darwin felt ready to prepare his work for publication. Once Darwin's book was finally published, it sold out immediately and was eventually published in six different editions. Unlike many other scientists, Darwin chose to write his book in a way that was accessible to the general public, which helped immensely with its quick consumption and widespread understanding. Scientists, too, were quick to tout the theory, as it helped explain a ton of what they'd been theoretically circling around for the past decade. Christians were less enthusiastic. They called it hearsay and condemned Darwin. He fell into a deeper disregard with Christians when, in his next publication, he theorized that men were descended from apes. Darwin himself was not forthcoming about his religious beliefs, but late in his life, he stated that he thought of himself as agnostic and someone who believed it's impossible to know whether or not God exists based on the material world. Darwin didn't explain everything about evolution in his publications, though. However, there were other geneticists that highlighted how genes from two parents remain separate in offspring's biological codes despite appearing to mix in their looks and personalities. So, together... The two groups' work proved that Darwin's theories were rooted in fact. Despite Charles Darwin's extensive research into biology, he ended up marrying his first cousin. They had 10 children, and Darwin died in 1882, and by that time, his theories were widely accepted by the public. He was honored upon his death by being buried in Westminster Abbey with British royalty. 
Today, scientists say that Darwin's theories were, for the most part, correct, though not in every specific instance. He was correct about the theory of natural selection and how it affects species, as well as how natural selection can contribute to the evolution of new species. His evidence in both cases is still considered sound to this day. He was wrong about some other stuff, though, like the Earth's age and the specifics behind how parents pass genes to children. For our music fact, we'll be talking about a tragic death rather than the continuation of life. On November 24th in 1991, Freddie Mercury, the lead singer of Queen, died of pneumonia. Just one day prior, he had made a very public announcement that he had AIDS, or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, the disease that results from HIV, or the human immunodeficiency virus. In 1991, HIV and AIDS were still incredibly stigmatized, and announcing that you were infected was incredibly brave, especially for someone who had such a public persona. Mercury thought it was important to announce his diagnosis because at the time, government officials were ignoring the mass tragedy that AIDS caused. Celebrities who were willing to publicly announce their diagnosis ultimately helped bring the disease to a place where stronger treatments could be funded and created. It also helped people understand that they needed to take the threat of HIV and AIDS seriously, and that they should learn about new precautions and medications that were coming forward to help people both prevent and treat the disease. Mercury was 45 years old when he died. It is believed that he had been diagnosed with AIDS two years earlier when he was 43. Mercury may have died young, but his legacy lives on stronger than ever. He's considered to be one of the best singers in the history of rock music, and his four-octave vocal range is still a rarity in performers today. Many of his songs have entered the public lexicon in an absolutely timeless way. Bohemian Rhapsody, We Are the Champions, and Somebody to Love, to name a few— After his death, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and the UK Music Hall of Fame. There is a statue of him overlooking Lake Geneva in Switzerland. And the film, Bohemian Rhapsody, a biography of Mercury, was the highest grossing musical biography film of all time. And now for our final segment of the day. I'm going to be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a November 24th in my life. I just have a lot of photos of food. My family on the week of Thanksgiving, not just Thanksgiving, but starting on November 24th, I guess, 2016, we had already started cooking. Um, Oh man, this was in the age of no pandemics, but we basically, what my family does is we have three separate Thanksgivings essentially. (laughs) So what we do is we have a Thanksgiving with family friends. So people we're not related to by blood, but we still consider to be family. Um, and we do that with them. So everybody, it's like big buffet style. People potluck, you know, bring their foods and we eat together. And then my family does one with my blood related family. So my grandparents maybe fly out sometimes or they drive down from where they live and we do Thanksgiving together. And then we also do one where it's just me, my mom, my dad, and my brother. And so it's like a tiny little Thanksgiving. So starting November 24th, we we attempted to go into our three-day long Thanksgiving endeavors. <laughs> That's all for today. Let's travel back in time again tomorrow. Remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and follow along at 365 Days MXM Tune on all platforms. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.